What's up everyone? It is me. I'm Erica and I'm with Artist Till Death and today I'm going to show you six super easy ways to create very nice, beautiful, sellable oceans. So I hope you stay tuned to see what we're going to be doing. but just so you guys know what the colors are, which I'm going to link down in the description box. Um, I'm using Aqua from Color Passion. Excuse the fact that my everything is filthy because I am a messy artist and it is what it is. I'm also using, I guess I could show you what I'm using while I'm doing it. This Color Passion Aqua is a very blue color, but a little bit on the turquoise side. It's kind of hard to see in the camera. I don't know. It's pretty accurate. It just has a little tinge more on the greeny side. Anyways, that's Color Passion Aqua. It's a transparent tint. Ooh, and it's super lovely to use. I'm also using a turquoise version. And it is on a greener side. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Up in the face cam. Um, it's also transparent. I'm also using Ronde Aqua from Color Passion. Ooh, I'm using a lot of Color Passions today. This is going to give me um, bigger cells as well as the navy from Color Passion. It's a nice deep blue. My general oceans are a light aqua e turquoise blue and then a really deep blue. And then of course for my waves, I'm using titanium white by just resin. That is because it's a heavier, it's heavier white and so it gives me the best looking results. Give me two seconds, I gotta grab a torch. I told you I wouldn't be gone that long. Okay, got a torch. All right, so I'm gonna show you different, six different ways to, um, to ocean. And so the first way is um, gonna be a torch and tilt. So we got a torch. So um, this is a little trivet or spoon rest. Mm, seven inch round, maybe nine. I'm not sure, numbers are hard but it's a small something that you can rest your spoons and whatnot on. So for a torch and tilt, I am using just the translucent tints. I'm not using my bigger cell makers like the base tints from Color Passion. And that is because the base tints really don't like a lot of heat. And this dark blue isn't that dark. So I'm gonna have to add a little bit more of that tint in here to deepen that. The great thing about using pigments made for resin is that you're not gonna set off your colors if you put a little bit too much in. I know when I first started, I was using acrylic paints, which you can definitely do, but you just have to be very careful because you can set that off or make it start to cure way too fast and then it's just, stressful and not fun. Okay, so I got my two colors down and then I'm putting some clear right here. And that's gonna be to separate my stark white from the blues so that I don't get a wave that's more on the, um, like a pastel white or pastel blue family. And I'm making sure that my wave touches both the dry board and the ooh, and the ocean wave or the resin. So you can see that it's touching both the dry part of the board on this side and the resin that's on the back side. So I'm going to be pushing my wave on this one backwards. And to do that, I'm using a torch. My torch happens to be 
um, weapon shaped, I assure you it is just a torch. Here we go. So I'm going to be tilting my, you can see in the little face camera, I'm going to be tilting it just slightly. Someone once told me it was a 45 degree angle. And I'm just going to let everything move. And as soon as it starts moving, I'm going to move further down the piece. I'm just hitting it just enough to get it to start to flow. And then I'm using indirect heat to kind of break open a couple more little pockets of wave, I mean of cells here and there. And my flame is leaving me, but I'm trying to knock this one out before we have to refill it. Nope, that's all we got. All right, well, um, oftentimes people will not let their piece kind of relax. And that's when usually the best reactions in your cells happen. So while I'm refilling my torch, ooh, I'm let that relax a little bit. Okay. Someone once told me you have to burp your torches, and ever since then, I do. And I'm pretty sure it makes a difference. Okay, so I'm not tilting it anymore. I am just using the indirect heat from my torch. So if this is the flame, I'm using kind of this area right here. You can't even see it. It's just indirect heat. I'm just going to touch in the little area. So for example, right here, if I want to wake that area a bit more up and create a few more cells, I'll just tap it a couple times and then let it relax. And as it relaxes, more cells are going to pop up. You don't want to do too much because you notice it kind of got fuzzy around those cells. They're not quite as rigid. So you kind of have to work really quick you don't want to make your other cells fuzzy. So that is a torch and tilt. I'm going to move this to the free zone. And then after we're done, we'll go and we'll look at all of them. All right. The next one, we're going to use a heat gun. And I'm going to use a concentrator nozzle on this one. Concentrator nozzle specifically that I'm going to use is uh, what's on it? The wedding cake attachment. I call it a wedding cake because it kind of looks like a wedding cake. You'll see what I mean. You'll see. You're going to be like, oh, it does look like a wedding cake. So I'm just covering everything. The idea here is not for it to be perfect, just for that there to be no dry areas. And it looks fine just like it is, but we're going to next level it. Let me clear down. We'll put the white down. Every uh, wave that I'm doing is going to be similar in that you need your white to touch the dry part of your canvas or board as well as the wet part or the resin part. And that's so that your resin cells can stretch as your um, everything else just kind of tilts down the piece. So this is the wedding cake attachment. As you can see, it is a one, two, three, four, five tier cake. It is also gross because I'm a messy artist. Now for this one, we're going to move left to right just like last time. We're just going to do little teeny tiny circles. And the difference with this one is, is that it's going to give like a ripply look. So I'm using high heat and high airflow. I'm just going to do little teeny tiny circles. As we're tilting just like last time, that kind of gives that little ripple that you kind of see when waves are kind of coming into shore. And again, as it sits, the cells are going to come out even more. And if they don't, we can always just hit it with a torch a little bit. And so it's meant to look a little bit rough out here. And then as you come in to have these little ripples, the closer you get to shore. This is one of my favorite ways to do. This is one I teach most in my ocean classes. Oh, 
Okay, the next one we're gonna do is similar to that one. It's with a heat gun, but it's gonna use a different attachment. If you're gonna change out your attachments, have a rag handy, because it will be hot even if you only used it one time. Just trust me, don't ask me how I know, just know that I know. All right, this heat gun attachment, I, sorry about that, lovingly call platypus attachment because obvious reasons. And just like with the other ones, we're going to add our color on. We're gonna create the shape of our shore. The awesome thing about resin is it self-levels. It just fills in on its own. So you don't really have to make sure everything is leveled up and the same, as you can see, well, maybe you can't. I don't know if you can tell by this little ripple right here and right here. It's kind of low right there, so it's catching the light different. But it will, focus, it will end up just self-leveling off just like everything else. It's kind of one of my favorite things about resin is I don't have to worry about that part. And anytime I don't have to worry about something, it's my favorite. So you may have noticed that I'm not using that much white because of the way I do my oceans, because I stretch my wave. If I put a whole bunch of white, it's gonna cover up all the blue. So it's very important not to do too much white. Now, my platypus attachment, I'm gonna turn it on high heat and high airflow, just like last time. I'm gonna tilt it just like every time. And on this one, I'm gonna just kind of catch a wave. As soon as it starts moving, I'm gonna follow it. All the way down. So now we have a rolled over wave. You see how your cells on top of the white? That's because we have clear in the middle. And this is a way that I like to do on bigger pieces because I can kind of loop them and layer them in, in different kind of ways. You can see that the cell structure is kind of thinner. It's one of my first styles of doing an ocean wave. I'm actually gonna just tap it with our torch over here to break it up a bit, create a couple more cells. You don't have to use just one technique of ocean at a time. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Set this in the dust freezer. What is the next one we're gonna do? Let's do, um, let's do, let's do a swipe. Okay, so swipes are with different kinds of paste. So these two, the navy and the rondaqua that I made from Color Passion are going to be our swipey colors. Now how these work is as long as these pigments from this brand, Color Passion, as long as the color passion paste are under other colors, which will be the titanium white in a minute, you'll get bigger cells. Now, to demonstrate that, I'm going to do just like we did before and just make sure there's no raw spots on our piece. These colors are opaque if you haven't noticed, and so you can't see through them like you could with the other ones that we were using. Focus. So, I'm going to put my clear down just like before. 
it's almost more important with this stuff because I really want my white to not end up as a pastel color. Now with this one, I'm gonna add a little bit more white because I'll be swiping it down instead of just blowing it with a heat source. And so, kinda need a little bit more. Alrighty. So I'm using some swiping papers, patented, no it's not, it's just my label maker. And what I'm gonna do is just swipe down the piece. I'm letting just a little bit pick up on my swiping paper. And I'm just swiping all the way down. If you don't want your wave to cover all the blues, then definitely don't do that. You can also move a little bit faster and it'll break like this. So, we're already starting to get some cells back here in the back part of the piece. I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of heat. Base paste do not like a lot of heat, so we're going to just lightly hit it. see how nicely these cells come up. They almost always have that kind of halo-y glow around them. Did I mention you can get all of these pigments and more on artistilldeath.com? Because you can. So I love it when there's like multi-color cells like those. I'm a sucker for a good sell. Ah! Maybe we should make that a shirt. Maybe. Okay. What's the next one? Oh, yeah. So, if you don't want to uh, use heat attachments like I've used or you only pop your bubbles with maybe a lighter or something like that at home or you're intimidated by open flame or the heat gun because a friend of yours may have burned herself which I have burned myself no shame no shame and you just use maybe like a small lighter to mess with your everything nope pop your bubbles sorry it's hearing Jeff in the background. You okay? Yeah. So, if you don't have a torch or a heat gun and you just use some heat source, which I'm not going to use a lighter because I have bigger heat tools like this torch but I didn't put a lot of heat on it so if you wanted to if your resin is on the thinner side or if you preheated it and you don't have all those things you can use a straw or just use your face like this please do not pass out because it is easy to do but this kind of gives something that's similar to the rippled look of the uh, wedding cake attachment. You just hit the areas with some heat and your cells will start to pop up. And as always, as your resin kind of settles a little bit, your cells will come out more and more just because that's what it does. So this is kind of a lighter, wispier, Type of look. If you do this, please do not pass out. That's my only request. Passing out is bad. Okay. Let's see. And then one that I get asked about quite often is blowing the wave this way as opposed to back into the ocean. And so to do that, let me think, how I would do it is put clear everywhere that I want my wave to be. Let's see. I don't 
really do this style that often because I forget and I always end up with my kind of go-to style. So it's a little bit new, that's fine. So I'm doing exactly what I did on many of the other ones, except for I'm kind of doing it in reverse. So instead of blowing into the deep water, I'm blowing towards the shore. And in fact, I'm not even gonna blow it. I'm gonna use the platypus attachment because it's just on there. And what this is supposed to look like is a wave rolling over the sand, essentially. I'm gonna catch a wave like normal. Maybe I'll just rip a little bit like I would on a bigger piece. breaking over our sand and we need to just add the back color I'm just going to lightly push it up till where the, the wave starts I'm trying my best not to pick up any of the white, but it's probably gonna happen, and that is fine. Okay. Then we'll add some of our dark blues. I'm trying to think if I wanna yeah, I guess I need to put another wave. Okay. So now we're going to add another wave that's kind of going backwards. I think I'm going to attach it kind of to where the existing wave is. Because why not? I haven't done that before. So I'm kind of experimenting along with you guys. Hope that's okay. So I'm just going to heat it just a bit. And I'm just going to use my face because I'll have more control that way. Said I would. Let's. So I thought I would be able to do it, but it's kind of gotten hazy right here. So I'm going to switch out my attachments that I'm using the cake again. Tilt it just slightly. Oh, I think that's still okay. You guys let me know in the comments if you think I messed it up. I'm interested to know what you guys think. All right, so I'm just gonna add a couple more cell breaks right here, and a couple more cell breaks right here, right here. Now you have a forward facing wave, and then a backward facing wave. Hmm. This one on kind of an angle so it's kind of faded on me you can still see well it's not going to focus and maybe not you can still see a lot of the design elements but it's kind of all tilted back in on itself so it's not as cute as it could be so what i'm going to do is since it's cooled off i can hold my wrist over the piece and i don't feel any heat coming off of it if you feel heat then just let it let it live for a minute. It won't take that long to cool down. So I'm gonna just redo it. You can redo it as long as, is this the first one I did? No, it's supposed to be a torch and tilt. I've done it, that's fine. We'll do another torch and tilt. This is just gonna be another wedding cake one. kind of 
lackluster in some areas, so I'm just going to hit it with a torch in a couple areas. There we go. A little bit of a loud ocean, but an ocean nonetheless. Okay. I don't have another one that has white paint on it, so I'm just going to base it in the round aqua because it'll have a lighter base. When you use translucence or transparency, you don't really want to go over something that's kind of like this, um, the brown here, because it's going to dull the colors. It's going to make it not look as beautiful as it should be. So I'm going to see what happens if I skim this with this Rondaqua. Rondaqua does not like a lot of heat, and we're going to torch and tilt, which is a fair amount of heat. We'll find out together. All right. I already know it's not going to like stay under the other colors because of what I'm about to do to it. So I'm just going into this one knowing that it's not going to be exactly like my first sample test piece. And that's okay. Okay. So I'm just going to blend these out just a little bit. Not a lot. It doesn't matter because I'm about to tilt it all and it's just all going to shift anyways. But I still think that looks fun. Don't you? Yes, yes you do. All right, so clear just as per usual. In fact, I'm gonna bring the clear out a little bit so you can really get a feel of what this looks like just in case it does something wild because I'm using a base tint instead of not. Okay, just don't want any dry bits. So it already looks fun. It already has cells because I'm using a top cell, which would be the tints, over a base cell, which is any color, passion, paste other than the top cell is going to be a base cell. Even if it doesn't say base cell, if it doesn't say top cell, it's base cell. All right, we're gonna get our torchy again. I'm gonna hold it a slight uh, oh my gosh, words. Incline, decline, uh, angle. We're going to do angle. We're just going to tilt it down. I'm going to tilt it to the sides a little bit as well because I started on the smaller part of this circle. Therefore, the white's just going to be columned up from this way. It's not going to have full coverage like it should. So this is going to be a bit of a swirly ocean. And I'm fine with that. So you can see I'm just dabbing it on to where I want those cells to pop up. The ocean part, not my favorite, but the cell bit you get the idea, right? Right. So, now I'm gonna show you guys again what they ended up looking like. Sorry about this bit. I'll fix it in post. We'll do a second wave on this one at some point. Torch and tilt. Yeah, second torch and tilt. Platypus attachment. See how much different it is now from even when we set it behind? This is going to be one of the wedding cakes. Vastly different. It's done the same way though. Focus. Oh, there we go. And then we have. much with the base tense so it's kind of eaten up my titanium they sunk a little bit but it's still beautiful beautiful texture 
Um, this is from using too much heat. My cells kind of dissipated a little too much. This is from using my face, I think. Nice little undertow, ripply wave current. And then our forward backward wave. Maybe one of my favorites, and I don't even do this style that often, but I think that's really fun. And then our accidental second um, wedding cake attachment. Focus. There we go. I love oceans. <laughs> I don't think there's very many oceans that I've met that I didn't like, you know? I will clean all of this up later, because it's a lot. So, let me just say adios to you guys. I'm super glad um, you guys were here with me today. I hope you learned something were inspired, educated, or otherwise entertained. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here to do what it is that you guys want. And lately, most of my everything that I've been requested to do has been oceans, different ways to ocean, so many ocean eating questions. And so I hope I have kind of encompassed all of that in this Monday. And um, tomorrow will be live at 2 p.m. Central. Sorry, this is a pre-record today, but I hope you enjoy it. I get a lot of comments about the jibber jab because I always want to talk to you guys when I'm doing a live. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it, and you can get all these colors at artisttodeath.com. I'll have them linked down in the description box under this video. And we kind of want another. You never know what someone's going through. And always remember that uh, we do the test, so you don't have to. See you guys in the next video. Bye. Just hit back. And so did the pumps. <laughs>